Good morning everybody. I'm going to do a soup tutorial. It's going to be in two parts because it's quite a um, comprehensive indicator. Um, so what do I mean by soup? Well, the soup is simply a um, all-in-one suite for harmonics and pitchforks. So this is um, euro pound and we can see we're in a quite strong uh, down channel, which is your shift channel, but I'll talk about that when we get there. So the soup indicator um, we will get from the MQL5 marketplace. So do uh, Zoop MT4. And you have to scroll down. Um, yeah, MQL5. And what I'll do is I'll attach this uh, URL to the video. Scroll down all the way. You can read this if you like, but I, it's probably a little bit overwhelming. And then you scroll down and you get the download link at the bottom here. Click that, and you'll see that it does come at, um, at a cost. It's fairly reasonable because the guy's put his lifetime's worth of work in the indicator, and for that reason, I do wholeheartedly recommend at least giving it a go. You can trial it for a month, um, but it is absolutely amazing. And this, um, I've been using it for four years, and uh, no complaints whatsoever. Um, so what you'll need to do is you'll log in on your MQL5 account, click that, and then you click buy. And then once you've gone through the payment, it will then say, you know, you registered your account. Then you come to uh, your MetaTrader 4 instance view. Um, you probably need to go to uh, terminal. And then you come to market. Oh. <laughs> That's annoying. Oh, it's not responding. Oh, market. Okay, purchased, and then you click uh, install, and then it will download from the MQL5 website. And once you've done that, then it will appear in the terminal. So view, um, navigator, right click, and attach the chart. Um, so when you first install it, you're uh, confronted with hundreds of settings so at first it can be quite overwhelming and for me from a technical background I found it quite overwhelming too so don't worry I'm going to break it down for you um, so what it is is like a bulk options here which I wouldn't recommend changing anything at all don't change anything here the only thing that you want to change is this top field okay but we'll I'll go and talk about that after I've um, broken down these sections. So section one is uh, for Fibo, which is obviously short for Fibonacci. You can have uh, Fibonacci levels, uh, dynamic and static on your chart. And um, so probably you're probably questioning what dynamic and static means. Dynamic is um, it's in flux, so it will change according to price action. Static is set in stone. So we're looking at an old zigzag that's actually cemented you know, in place and dynamic is not quite complete so this fluctuates a lot and this one's the set in stone so that's the difference between dynamic and static. I would prefer to do static but that's just I'm like a traditionalist so you can do dynamic if you'd like um, it does change quite a lot but it could be useful. Um, so Pesavento patterns is just another word for saying harmonics same with Gartley uh, they married the two together in this suite. It's really good. And uh, lots of settings here. And then four is your pitchfork. And now we're going to be dealing with pitchforks because we want pitchforks on your chart and we want harmonics. So let's scroll all the way up to the top. And then what you need to do is double click and then you get a drop down and then click search patterns. Click OK. And it says, well, what we we'll need to do, we'll need to clean up a little bit so we can see uh, color scheme, black and white. And so we've got um, the Aussie Yen with a bullish dragon. And so you see how that would be a buy because of the diagonal break, right? Because so that's your harmonic. So what Zoop does, it does an algorithmic uh, sweep of the price data, and it tells you the harmonics based on um, that database that it's got. And it knows that this is a bullish dragon uh, because it checks its database according to the zigzags that it sees, which is really quite amazing. 
So you would have had this appear in your chart and then you would have entered there potentially. And you obviously you want it to match the fundamentals and the sentiment, but that would have been the technical buy. And you can see how that did actually launch quite uh, quite a lot. All right, so we've got the harmonics. That's great. Um, part two of the video is going to be how to interpret the pitchforks. So it's this this video is just for the installation and configuration of the Zoop indicator. Uh, indicators, double click. And so we, we've done the harmonics, which is fine. Scroll down to four. And then what we want to do, we just want a static pitchfork. We don't want dynamic, we just want static. You can have two pitchforks on your chart, but um, I prefer just to have one. So we'll, we'll change that to uh, static pitchfork and static shift line. Okay. Uh, we want a static main pitchfork and we want the pitchfork width to be one. And so that's it. So that's the only thing you need to change. You don't really want two pitchforks. You can if you want, but we just go for one. So we just change that to that setting. And then you change that to that setting. Click OK. Now what's happened before, people have um, followed my instructions and they're like, well, where's the pitchfork? And it's completely understandable because it would throw anybody. Right, you know, it's like, well, I just clicked OK. I just changed the settings. So where is it? This is the workaround. Right click, template, save template. Call it soup demo. Do you want to replace it? Yes. Right, so you, uh, after you change the settings, you need to save the template. Go to uh, view, market watch. We'll do like a, um, maybe the pound yen. I don't know. Let's have a look at that. And then you go to template and then the soup demo. Okay. And that's how you get the pitchfork to appear. So some things of note, uh, what I would recommend that you check the uh, button, the shift button. So you've got more data to your right. It's up to you. And uh, in order to get rid of the Elliott wave, which is a nice feature, uh, just press the escape button and that gets rid of it. You can um, append Elliott wave to the chart, but I, I just deal with pitchforks and harmonics. So here's a good example of the pound yen being a buy because it's um, it's detected a bullish ABCD based on that price action. And it, it's, it's valid as long as that red zone doesn't break. This is the red zone. And um, so what I think I've covered uh, the installation and configuration. What I'll need to do now in the second video is talk about how to interpret what you see because it might be a little bit confusing and so what I'll do I'll just um, talk about the technicals afterwards so hopefully that's um, fairly straightforward and how to get the pitchforks to appear and the harmonics as well and uh, just a quick one on the euro pound because this looked like a good one and so uh, that was probably a good entry and maybe you'll target this so um, I think that's okay and I'll do a part two now so stay tuned.